what is up you guys welcome back to the channel my fellow weirdos and in today's video we are doing what goddess has a powerful message for you pick a card okay so basically these are the piles i've been channeling goddesses like crazy i've been having a lot of visions so basically i picked out um, 10 of the goddesses that I felt drawn to or that have came to me recently or that I've just been really feeling and then I made piles for each of them So the only cards that I know about that are in here are the ones from the goddesses But everything else is I have not seen yet. So I just wanted to say that really quick, but basically These are the piles. This is pile one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay all timestamps will be down in the description below if you need to pause the screen and pick that's fine if you need crystals on them then we are going to go ahead and put some crystals on them if that helps you pick Alrighty, crystals are on them personally i find crystals a little distracting so i don't like to pick with crystals normally but if that helps you that's fine you can pause the screen or if they are distracting you can rewind and go back to where they weren't they didn't have crystals on them and pause and pick your pile because there's a lot of piles because i was really feeling a lot of the goddesses wanting to kind of you know give some messages so go down to the timestamps or the comments below to pick which pile you would like to pick you can choose more than one if you would like just follow your own intuition and let's go ahead and get into it Alrighty, this is for those of you that picked the first pile which was this one let's go ahead and see which goddess has a message for you first okay so the goddess that we have here is Seridwin. Hopefully I am pronouncing that right. But in this deck, they have her as potential, okay? And Seridwin can come in times when we feel like basically that we are not good enough, that we are not seeing who we truly are, that we look in the mirror and we're not 100% sure about who we are, what we see, what our purpose is. It's kind of like feeling lost and that's kind of what I'm getting here. It's like a sense of feeling lost, not knowing one's beauty, not knowing one's perfection, not knowing one's spirit, not knowing one's potential, okay? so. Seridwin is the goddess that you guys have as pile one. So let's go ahead and see what else is going on with you guys. So we have the mirror. We have the mountain. And I'm going to go ahead and skip to your tarot cards, which are a little bit. Okay, so we have the two of pentacles, the sun the empress okay so these are the tarot cards that you guys got pile number one so this tells me right off the bat that you are juggling so much um i feel like you're not exactly sure what your purpose is kind of like i was saying before you're not exactly sure where you belong and i feel like this has a lot to do with beauty and self-esteem this has a lot to do with having the strength we have the lion in the card this has a lot to do with having the strength and and expressing that inward image out now i feel like you've gotten a little bit distracted somewhere in the recent in the recent time because we have the mirror and the mountain and the two of pentacles okay so some of you guys could actually be juggling two jobs two passions or two different ideas for what you want to do in life but there's definitely a huge emphasis here on your purpose what you're here to do with the mountain here where you belong and i feel like you look at other people and you see their success and you see how just how they've risen and their journey and everything and that's really what this pile is about is the journey okay the journey and not getting lost and seeing your inner beauty so far is what i'm getting here um with the mirror this is all about your reflection seeing your potential seeing your beauty so like it's crazy because this card goes with everything that we have in this pile so far um but we also have the mountain so i feel like you're doing too much pile number one things that you're not passionate about you're doing things out of a place for necessity out of a place for need and it's got you all out of whack and off balance basically you're not doing things out of a place of passion of joy of 
like love of beauty of seeing the beauty in it so i really feel like whatever you're juggling whatever you're working on it's really important that you find the beauty in it or else you're going to keep feeling like um your life isn't your own in some way now there's some of you guys are kind of back and forth with like planting something, planting the seeds for something metaphorically, obviously. You're back and forth between actually planting the seeds for something and actually like following through with something that is probably very prevalent to what you're like what you're here to do in this life. It's probably very prevalent to your purpose, okay? Because we have the sun and the empress. So this is like showing your beauty to the world. This is showing your creation. Both of these energies are creation energies. Both of these energies are also um, deal with fertility, deal with children, okay? So there could be a message in here about your children. Some of you guys could be deciding whether you want to have children or not. And if it's not a child, then like I said, it's a creation, it's a passion. But what I see here is like, you're so worried about the, what the top of the mountain looks like that you're not taking the action, okay? Like you're just juggling so many other things back and forth. We also have two moons in, this car, in these cards. So this is really about getting in touch with how you feel. What do you want? Okay, getting in touch with who you are, what you stand for, what's your identity, okay? Because that's going to help you soar. And I feel like if you're doing too much, if you're not doing what you love, it could end up affecting your health as well in some way. Okay, whether it's mental or physical, but it could affect your vitality. Like there's things that you wanna do, but maybe you feel like you don't have the potential, you don't have the resources or you can't see the bigger picture and what you're doing here. Um, so it's really important for you to feel it. Is it going to be hard? Yeah, with the mountain there. Is it going to be a journey? Yeah, but that's why you need to do it because you're going to learn so much along the way. So let's see. Oh my God, pile number one. I am so sorry. So apparently I was doing your reading and never hit record. <laughs> Fuck, man, Mercury retrograde. Okay, so basically the goddess that you have that's giving you a message is Sarah Dwin, and she stands for potential. And God, this is so hard because I can't even remember everything I was saying, but what I'm getting here is this is major self-worth. This is major looking ahead and having a vision, having a passion, like it's all there but it's like really taking that first step. It's really seeing your beauty, seeing your talent, seeing your potential, seeing what could be instead of what isn't and letting go of anything that's like distracting you, letting go of anything that you are um, putting your energy into that isn't what you really, really desire, that isn't what you really, really want because we have the two of pentacles here. So. You're definitely juggling these things. You're definitely dealing like with energy exchange. And I feel like it's zapping your energy. And with the sun and the empress, like you're definitely here to do something big. You're definitely here to sow some seeds, to create something huge. Now, both of these energies can also deal with children and fertility. The empress is fertility, birth, creation, life. The sun is life. So you, there's something that you need to give life to that you've been really going back and forth with because I think you're scared with the mountain here in the mirror. You're scared how it's going to look and you're scared how the journey is going to look. You're scared it's going to be too hard or it feels like it's so far away. It feels like it's unachievable. It's unattainable, but it's not, okay? Because everything here so far is telling me like, yes, go for it. Take action. Bring this thing to life, whether it's an actual child or whether it's a creation, a project, a job, a business, whatever, an idea. There's something here that you seriously, like that it, I feel like the cards are telling you it's really important to bring this to life, whatever it is. It's really important to put yourself out there with the sun to express your creativity, to express your ideas. We also have the talisman, you are destined to succeed. Okay, so this is like a major success, like if you can do it, if you can put yourself out there. We also have action and assessing okay and those are the two cards i just pulled when i realized 
my freaking, I wasn't even filming, but basically, once again, taking action. And I also feel like with this Two of Pentacles and the Sun pile number one, your energy exchange, like the thing, the things that are distracting you, the things that you are putting your energy into is taking away energy from who you really are, what you really want, and what you really desire. Okay, so this is, you guys are beautiful people. You guys have beautiful gifts. You guys have beautiful talents. It's just being able to see it. Because you're like, like if you take this card and put it right next to the mountain, she's like literally looking ahead and trying to assess the situation without taking action. <clears throat> she's trying to predict what's going to happen. And that creates fear, which in return pauses you in your tracks and you don't end up moving forward with it. You don't end up doing what you would really like to do, but you know, you can't because you have all this fear. So we also have a hidden gift, sadness and ending a new beginning. Okay. And then we also have purification, water, emotional cleansing, rejuvenation. Just massive creative energy here. And with a hidden gift, I feel like you're scared to let something go with this two of pinnacles because you know this journey is going to require you to drop one of those pinnacles, to drop something that you're doing. It's going to require your full focus, your full attention, your full life force energy, your full creativity, your full talents, your full gifts. But you're so scared to drop that pinnacle. So with a hidden gift here, it's like, yeah, it may seem sad, but it's actually a hidden gift. It's actually an opportunity. And I also feel pile number one, you guys actually like have a for real hidden gift that you guys don't like to share with people because you're worried that it's not good enough, but it is like, there's something that you guys are so extremely talented at and it's time for you to shine. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to do it and quit trying to assess the situation. Take action like take action with purification water. It's like by dropping that pinnacle and realizing your potential by looking in the mirror and literally realizing your potential, you have this unlimited source of creativity. You have this unlimited source of healing, of moving on, of cleansing, healing, like creative, imaginative energy this creative life force like that is what this pile is all about this creative life force because we have the sun the empress like it's time for you to start seeing your own potential it's time for you to do that thing whether it's a business a job a creative project a creative endeavor there's something that you need to create and bring to life here but you're on the fence like she's literally on a bridge but it's kind of like she's on the fence. She's so scared to drop one of those pinnacles, but she'd be able to walk smoother if she did. She'd be able to make it across the bridge. And it's like, you guys have been through a lot and you're so scared of the journey with the mountain here. Like you're so scared it's going to take you so long or it's gonna be so hard or that it's basically gonna be like impossible. And I promise you pile number two, or I'm sorry, pile number one. I don't know why I said number two. I promise you it's not like it is so much more possible than you actually think it is. You just have to take the first step. You just have to take that action. You just have to do that thing that you are putting off so bad because it seems so scary. It seems so foreign. And I feel like you've been through a lot. So you're scared. It's like, to lose this one pinnacle, to lose this one thing, whatever it is, whatever this distraction that's like taking away your energy from this like success that you're destined to have. It's like just so strong, you know, like I get it. It's like, crap, I had to climb a whole mountain to get here. I had to climb a whole mountain to get these two pinnacles and now I gotta leave one behind. Like really, you're telling me I gotta drop this thing now? Yeah, because it's like you can't even you can't even know right now like how much free, how much more free you will feel once you do. Like it's impossible to see it. 
but you keep trying to see it with assessing there. You keep trying to see like what's ahead and predicting. And I'm telling, I'm telling you, you're going to have success. So if you're predicting that it's going to be hard, which yeah, like life's hard. Okay. It's not going to be like 100% a piece of, a piece of cake, but you will feel just rejuvenated. You will feel free is like what I'm getting here. You will do things out of desire, not out of like, you know, necessity or whatever. Okay. So we have romance. Romance, it is it is a sacred power. Let it come to me this hour. We also have energy, a light inside my fire divine energy. Fill me, fill me, make me shine. So sorry, I know I keep bumping and messing with the camera, but I'm like super paranoid that it's not even and it's like really bothering me. Okay, so with the romance and energy like i said like energy goes perfect with the sun card like that is our life force that is our life force energy the empress gives birth to our life force like where are you putting your energy like where are you getting distracted and so energy a light inside my fire divine energy fill me make me shine so once you let go of that one thing that's taking and zapping all of your energy, that is when you, this snowball effect happens, this ripple effect happens, and you start to see your potential. You start to see how you can get back on top of that mountain without that one pinnacle. Like, and I love this kind of like frame of thought. Like, so a lot of people, and like you can use like the spiritual community as an example, a lot of people will like get to the other side so get to a side where they're like enlightened or hashtag woke or whatever you want to call it right so a way you can think about this is like you get in a boat and you have to row all the way across the river to get to the other side and then you get to the other side and you like do you take the boat with you on to continue on your journey do you carry the to like do you carry the boat and the paddles with you and then you see someone else that like motor boated <laughs> i don't even know if that's a word but like used a motor boat to get to the other side and you're pissed because you're like look at this journey i just went on right like what like what the hell um so what i'm seeing here is like other people can get there in different ways. You don't have to continue carrying the boat with you the whole time, right? It helped you get there. But now there's a new journey that's sprouting, that's pushing you to move forward. And it's literally telling you, you will see success from it. You will see attention from it. You will gain the energy from it, okay? Now, for some of you, this could have something to do with a relationship, Okay, so this could definitely have something to do with a relationship, maybe turning a spark back on. Like I said, for some of you, it could actually be children. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's what I see there. Or some of you guys could just be wanting a relationship or something, but there's something distracting you because I'm not getting that this is very much so about relationships. I'm more getting that this is about self-worth. Okay, this is about self-worth and potential, obviously, but that is basically what I'm getting. So we also have personal issues. Um, per a personal issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer, and you are good enough, full moon in Virgo. So like I said, definitely self-worth issues here um, that I see coming up. So with the personal issue reaches a resolution, full moon in Cancer. So this could actually be a time frame. Um, but I really feel like, you know, this is really talking about because I feel like you guys are really nurturing people. You guys are really like kind people. Um, you guys really try to do things for others because we also have full moon in Virgo here. But you don't do enough for yourself. And I feel like that's where this distraction is coming in. Because I don't know why. I just keep seeing the Two of Pentacles as a distraction. Like sitting on the fence. Um, and not making a decision. Because you're too scared to give up one of those Pentacles. Right? And so. Because you feel like you can't survive without it. But the Full Moon in Virgo is like you can. 
okay? And you will reach a resolution with this full moon in Cancer as well. And we, I mean, we even have this talisman card. Like, this is all, all the assurance you need. Like, you are destined to succeed. The only person holding you back is yourself, pile number one. Literally. Like, you are your own worst enemy. And I'm sure you can relate to that. So, that is what I'm getting for you guys, pile number one. Hopefully that resonated. Definitely let me know down in the comments below what you thought and if it did. If you were attracted to another pile, you can go ahead and pick. Or if this pile didn't resonate, you can pick another pile. But yeah, we are going to move on to pile number two. What's up, pile two? This is for those of you that picked this lovely crystal right here. So let's go ahead and see which goddess has a message for you. Okay, so we have the goddess Hecate, the in-between. So I am actually still learning about Hecate, but I know she is associated with like the mother of witches the triple goddess, um, the feminine energy, okay? She's also associated with like crossroads and decisions and being in that in-between place. She's in between two worlds. So there could be a decision or an important crossroads in your life um, or maybe you are dabbling into more taboo areas of life and right now she is coming up to give you a message to help guide you in those unknown areas and or at that crossroad or with that decision. So let's go ahead and see what else. Okay, so we have the Eight of Swords, we have the Tower, and we have the Guide. Interesting. So what I see here, pile number two, is that you've been very scared about something is kind of what I'm getting here. There's like a certain level of fear. And like I said, she was coming in to guide you and we literally have the Hierophant, which is called the guide in this deck. But basically there's some kind of like huge shocking transformation that you are so scared like you were so scared of it um because with the eight of swords here this tells me this is basically all in your head like yeah you could have went through something you know you could have went through a tower moment but also i feel like with the eight of swords here because the eight of swords it's like she blindfolded herself it's like she doesn't want to see she wants to be in those that frame of mind she wants to have those thoughts almost because she doesn't know a better way she can't see a better way and that's where the guide comes in i also feel like this is really about your belief systems like there's been some kind of long-term belief system that you've had that's been kind of like struck into the ground like struck into the ground and it's been really kind of like messing with your head um, because there's like this perceived notion of something. There's something that you can't see because the next card we have is the unseen. And then we also have the storm. And like I said, Hecate can go in between worlds. And you're kind of, I feel, at this in-between place where you're looking for guidance. You're not sure. It's kind of unknown. There's like this unknown aspect of it because I really feel like a, a belief system of yours or like a worldview of yours has kind, has kind of like changed. It's kind of like hit the ground, you know what I mean? And now you're like, shit, I've lived this way my whole life or I've looked at things my whole life. Maybe you're just getting into spirituality or you're just getting into some kind of new way of looking at things or new way of doing things. Maybe you're getting into witchcraft or like occult practices and you're like wow like this is insane i didn't know this could be a thing i didn't realize how how much there was that was unseen i didn't realize how blind i was i didn't realize how how much i didn't know but there's also this level i feel for some of you that it is the unknown it is something scary it is something that you can't see, really. 
but I also feel with the tower here because it's not always like bad okay so I don't want you guys to freak out it's not always like bad it's not always like your life is just crashing down and really I feel like it's more in your head this is more of a perception thing more of like a a belief thought pattern kind of thing this is some kind of breakthrough some kind of breakthrough that uproots you that literally breaks the chains that you were bound to for a very long time it's like a beautiful disaster but you may not be able to see that with the unseen and the eight of swords there and i also feel that some of you guys may need to find a teacher or a guide somebody that knows more about whatever it is that you're experiencing in order to have them kind of help and guide you through it okay someone that's been where you've been not that they necessarily know more than you they've just been where you've been okay if that makes sense so the next card we have is the moon. You will be guided through darkness. Beautiful, okay. Wow, that literally goes with everything that we've been talking about here. <laughs> it's insane. Um, and then we also have will. And then we also have sovereignty. So with the moon here, like I said, Hecate can sometimes be like known as like the goddess of the moon or the mother of the moon or the mother of witches, which is very much so associated with the moon and that like really powerful feminine energy that we have within all of us. But it's also associated with things that are unseen or intuition and trusting our intuition. And with the guide here, I kind of feel like, you know, you're coming into a period of enlightenment. You're coming into a period of, it's like destructive. Like a lot of people think like becoming enlightened or having a spiritual awakening is like this fun thing, but that's not always the case for people. In fact, it's, I, it's never been the case for me. I don't know about others, but it's never been the case for me. It's always been some like crazy, huge life shattering moment where I'm like, oh my God, you know? But I don't regret it. I never regretted it. I never was like, oh, I rather would have just been asleep. You know what I mean? Like, no, that's not it at all. It's kind of like, you're like, wow, like this is crazy and everything's falling apart. And it's like, my life is just, I'm looking at everything completely different. It's almost like nothing changed, but everything changed, right? We also have will and sovereignty, like I said. So there's something that you just need to do like with will there i'm kind of feeling like there's something that you just need to do you need your intention like what is your intention okay and by looking at that i feel like you are going to be more aware you are going to understand like what is your intention behind things like what is your will behind things um this definitely has some huge witch vibes so i don't know if some of you guys practice it or just some kind of like practitioner of some kind especially to do with like the occult or the taboo areas of life we also have sovereignty and this is like once again knowing your place like i i kind of feel like instead of choosing to be blind step into your power that's kind of what i'm getting here step into your power don't be scared to take your crown you know what I mean? Don't be scared to do what you have to do to step into your power. So we also have reflection, illusion, self-examination, distortion. We also have purification, fire, bare essentials, the naked truth, wholeness. Yes. Yeah, you guys are going through a major, major breakthrough. Pile number two. And I think it's really important that if you want, if you do, dabble into the occult and witchcraft and stuff like that i would definitely call upon the goddess of hecate i really feel like she will guide you through this i literally feel like that's what this is saying like she will guide you through this with reflection here it literally says illusion self-examination distortion so where you couldn't see before but you were like you were trying to 
still control something you were still trying to make it what you wanted but you couldn't see something all the way and it was probably making you miserable and you felt stuck so reflecting going through this period of reflection it will cause this breakthrough for you where purification comes in bare essentials the naked truth wholeness like getting down to the bare essentials that's why the storm and the tower are necessary because you're stripping away anything that just doesn't matter anymore but you couldn't see it you know what i mean you couldn't see it that's why it's happening it's stripping away anything that is not aligned with you anymore anything that is not in your path anymore or that is isn't supposed to be in your path so we also have confidence earth and air water and fire let my confidence take light burn higher and then we also have trust i am safe i am secure in love i trust my faith endures beautiful energy okay so like i was saying before with sovereignty and will like this is all happening i really feel like to help you step into your power to help you step into your confidence for you not to fear chaos for you to understand that chaos is a, necess is a necessity destruction is a necessity you can't have restruction or reconstruction without destruction you can't build without first making space right and that's what i kind of feel like the lesson is here for you it is really teaching you to step into your confidence to step into your power and with trust here it's funny because we have 31 and 32 um with trust here i feel like you're really being guided to trust within yourself more to trust within the unknown to trust within the divine to trust within Hecate even or the moon whatever you believe in we also have your communicate your I'm sorry your commitment to God Mercury retrograde your commitment is being tested first quarter moon we also have what do you need to release waning moon okay so I really feel like for you guys over this next month you guys are definitely going to have a huge breakthrough a huge awakening moment that is truly going to help you grow truly going to help enlighten you truly going to help you evolve and just be more aligned with who you truly are with your higher self with your desires your confidence your power and you're really learning how to trust and the unseen and things that you cannot see um and also with your commitment is being tested here i really feel like that goes through with everything it's like any commitments that you have that just aren't aligned with who you are will be shaken away okay i really do feel that and then the ones that are supposed to be there the ones that are supposed to stay will okay so and then what do you need to release? Obviously, after this breakthrough, I feel like there's going to be a lot of purification, a lot of releasing, a lot of healing, um, a lot of truth, and a lot of wholeness, like that card says. Like, So yeah, everything goes together here. That is what I'm getting for you guys, pile number two. Hopefully it resonated. Definitely let me know down in the comments below if it did and if you liked this reading if you were drawn to another pile you can go ahead and pick another pile if you'd like and i will see you guys in my next one bye what is up pile number three this is for those of you that picked the third pile let's go ahead and see which goddess is speaking to you and why okay so you guys have the goddess of persephone this deck has her as an experience but I mean, you can look at her like that. My vibe off Persephone is that, yeah, she starts off young. She starts off inexperienced. She starts off kind of playful and a girl like we all do, unless you're a boy. But <laughs> you start off with this kind of like um, inexperience as a child, and then you grow to understand things. And Persephone was taken to the underworld by Pluto. Some people believe she was kidnapped and held there against her will, and other people believe that she wanted to go. I believe she wanted to go. She had, I personally, like the energy that I pick up from her, not just from reading about her, not just from learning about her, just the energy I personally pick up from her is that she was longing to get away. She was longing to do something different. And because of that experience, 
she got to have the best of both worlds. She got to come home and be young and spend time with her mother. And then she also got to rule the underworld. She got to be the queen of the underworld. She got to fall in love and to figure out what her true power and her true calling and her true confidence was, okay? So that is the energy that I personally get from Persephone. So you could relate to that in some way, shape, or form. But let's see what kind of message Persephone is wanting to tell you guys. Nectar. We have the underworld. This is crazy, you guys. These piles have been just so like identical with the goddesses so far. And we have the cave. So this is really interesting. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay. So with the nectar here, I mean, this is literally the story I just told. Literally. It's like through the darkness, you find a light. Um, with nectar here, it's like there's something sweet. There's something like attracting. Um, there's something like attractive is kind of what I'm picking up. There's something that pulls you in that's like receptive, but like a magnet at the same time. Like there's this attraction energy. There's this like want or this kind of like um, childish want to do something, but you almost feel like you shouldn't in some way is kind of what I'm getting here because it seems creepy or it seems bad or it seems naughty or something along those lines. And then with the cave here, it's like sometimes you have like Persephone teaches us that to gain experience, you first have to be inexperienced. There's nothing wrong with being inexperienced, that that is how you find your power. You can't start from a place of experience and become experienced because you are already experienced. You know what I mean? Like you can come be you can come become more experienced in a different topic or a different uh, way of thinking or something along those lines. But basically what I see here is you're being attracted to explore something unknown, to explore the void, to explore um, possibly even a fear there's like a sweetness here with the nectar and it's kind of like pulling you in and you're kind of like, I don't know what to do about this. Like, is this normal? So we also have the magician, the lovers, the knight of wands, and the high priestess. Yeah, extra cards. A lot of extra cards came out for this pile. So the magician fell out reversed. I thought that was interesting. The lovers, the knight of wands, the high priestess. So there's this like attraction to something that I feel like you shouldn't have if you picked this pile. And if this isn't resonating, you can always pick another pile or just wait and see if it does end up resonating because sometimes other things come in. But basically with the magician here, something is masked like with the lovers and the magician reversed, it's like you feel like you don't have the resources or you don't have the tools or you don't have the confidence to either make a choice or move forward with something, whether it's a relationship, a job, something along those lines. Like you feel like you're out of resources, like you're out of luck, like you don't have what you need to move forward something isn't what it appears all the way but you're still being attracted to it with the knight of wands and the lovers there and nectar right it's like you're still being attracted to it and then with the high priestess it's like this you know divine feminine energy this intuitive energy of like the darkness and like what's going on inside it's like this mysteriousness right and so your answers are within you okay when the high priestess shows up it tells us that our answers are always within us so um, if you're looking outside for your answers it may be a little bit hard to find them because they're always within us we also have hunger We also have attraction. Oh my God, I can't make it up, you guys. I cannot make it up. 
there is something that you want bad. And with the Knight of Wands there, that's this attraction, this impulsive energy to just do it. Like, I just want to do it. I don't want to think about it. And I almost want to tell you to. Like, I almost want to tell you to do it because the Knight of Wands and the High Priestess. But how do you gain experience? Right? How do you gain experience? It's like there's just this magnetic pull to something and you're like, oh my God, I don't understand it. I can't make logical sense for it. I feel like I don't have the experience with all of these things to even do it, but I'm being pulled towards it. And I don't know what it is, you guys. It's probably going to be different for all of you, but I, I don't know. But anyway, so we also have evolution, earth changes, climate change, transformation. Okay, we also have intuitive communication, silent whispers of the heart. Okay, that goes with the high priestess. And we also have loss, grief, sadness, resurrection. This is so funny. This is literally Persephone, you guys. It took me so long to draw these piles because I really wanted to make sure I connected to each and every because I did handpick the goddesses, but I did not handpick the cards. I went with like the cards of the goddesses that were pulling to me and then each goddess like I would connect to their energy and just whatever cards would fly out I would put them in the pile that was that and it's just it's cracking me up but anyways so evolution earth changes climate changes transformation so you're definitely I feel like this is almost like a lesson in how to trust your intuition how to know what your intuition is telling you, how to go with what you're intuitively feeling. And you have this desire, you have this attraction, and it may be magnetic. You may not be able to stop it. Maybe it's part of your learning experience. You know what I mean? Maybe it's part of you getting drawn in and doing that thing, right? Because, and then we have grief, loss, resurrection, which literally goes with her story as well, right? Because she goes to the underworld, and her mom loses her and she misses her mom and it creates grief and sadness but also resurrection because she's resurrected into the queen of the underworld it's like she had to go through that whether you believe that you know pluto stole her or whether you believe that she went down there willingly it's like she had to go through that experience for whatever reason oh my god <laughs> you guys i cannot Safe home, I cast the circle roundabout, Safe, safety now is beyond doubt. Oh my god. And she returned safe, safely home. Home safely. <laughs> true love come to me, true love shall come to me. As I do well, so mote it be. So, I'm kind of like at this, in this position as a reader where it's like, I kind of feel like if I spoil something, it may not, it may prevent you from going through it and learning the lesson yourself. But I also feel like with all of these huge attraction energies here that you're probably going to do it no matter what I say, eventually at least. So there is something that's not being seen here correctly with the magician, okay? And I do feel with true love come to me and safe home, kind of what I was getting from these cards is that you may think something is true and it doesn't mean that it's not, but there is something that's not necessarily being seen all the way, okay? And I feel like that could just be you not trusting your intuition or you holding yourself back because there's a fear or something along those lines. So we also have the black cat, your luck will soon change. And then we also have Surrender to the Divine, Full Moon. And then we also have Look at the Bigger Picture, Full Moon and Sagittarius. Very interesting. So both of these, you know, like I've been saying with Full Moon and Sagittarius, looking at the bigger picture, um, it's like you want what you want it. It's impulsive. You want it now. You may not be looking at the bigger picture. And then we also have Surrender to the Divine you and only you can decide like your answer so i feel like for those of you that picked this pile you were probably wanting like a super clear answer or like a yes or no or something along those lines but 
like should I do this should I not like you know I kind of have these conflicting parts within me and I feel like you know a lot of you have to go through whatever this is and do it to really understand something about yourself and to really grow and evolve as a person whatever it is so but yeah I, I almost feel like because there's been things that I've just been called to do there's certain things in my life and I was just talking about this today in my online course but there's certain things in my life that I just knew I had to do I didn't know why I didn't know where it came from I knew it wasn't even me it wasn't it was like something more powerful than me and I just had to do it and some of the things weren't that great like some of the things were doing things that you know really kicked my ass and really you know had me down and out and were really really challenging and really really scary and I you know you would think like why in the hell would I be supposed to go through something like that like but I never I don't regret those those experiences those experiences where I felt called to do something where I just was like you know where it overrode I was called so much that it like overrode my fear and did it like even if something horrible happened from it, like I grew tremendously and I didn't regret it at all because it was like almost in alignment with something I had to learn. It was like in, in alignment with my higher self. So that is what I'm getting for you guys, pile number three. Hopefully that resonated. Definitely let me know down below. And we are going to move on to pile number four. What's up pile number four? This is for those of you that picked this pile, which is pile number four. So let's go ahead and see which goddess has a message for you today. So we have Gaia Earth. Beautiful energy. So Mother Earth is real. She's in your face. She's physical. She is what you can see, feel, touch. She is not soft like water. You cannot land on her and have a comfy landing. You know what I mean? Like her ground is hard, but her nature is beauty. She is the creation of basically our nature. She's the creation of the world that we live on. You know, she is mother nature. She is mother earth. She is mother Gaia. But what you see is what you get with her. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what kind of message that Gaia has for you guys. So we have the healer, the mentor, and we have the queen. Right off the bat, I feel that you guys are pretty aware of yourselves you guys are pretty self-aware people um there's also kind of like this wisdom that you have like maybe you are very earthy people maybe you respect the earth maybe you respect you know the environment you respect you know mother earth and what she does you respect realness you respect physical energy what's in front of your face right you know what is authentic you know how to how to be i'm almost getting like beyonce vibes like for whatever reason you're kind of like the whole package the healer the mentor and the queen like you do it all right you do it all you know how to do it all let's go ahead and see which tarot cards you have so we have the five of swords the wheel of destiny the ten of pentacles and the Eight of Cups. In the past, you have really dealt with a lot of betrayal, I feel. You've dealt with like a whole lot of betrayal, a whole lot of people, a whole lot of selfishness really is kind of what I'm getting here, a whole lot of selfishness. And you may still be dealing with people like that, but I feel most of you have kind of moved on like you've through the pain through the heartbreak through the suffering through people not seeing you or through people not knowing you in some way through people not giving you the time of day you've realized what it is that you're here to do with the wheel like things have really changed for you 
And so with the Ten of Pentacles, or they will be changing, like some of you guys could be in different phases of this reading, but with the Ten of Pentacles, this is going after your dreams. This is success. This is material success. This is achieving abundance in a true, in the true and highest form, materially and physically having the family or having the house of your dreams or having the job of your dreams some of you could already have that some of you could be going after that but this is your goals this is your achievements but with the eight of cups here you're kind of longing for something better it's like you've done all the work you've achieved what you've wanted with something in the past okay but with the eight of cups here there's like a longing for something more something more emotional something more emotionally feeling filling and less physical less mental we also have the siren a temptation temptation may lead you astray we also have discernment we also have patience achievement keep focused on your dream we have apprehension moving out into the world doubt fear sacred journey number 22 life cycles, family transformation. So that's kind of what I see here. You have this higher calling. It's like you've achieved something, but now you have this kind of apprehension towards it. You have this kind of like higher calling. Um, now you're kind of like you've created a safe and stable ground for yourself. You've created this security for yourself, but now you have like this higher calling, I feel, to help other people with the healer there. With a temptation may lead you astray and discernment. I feel like you kind of have learned a discernment. And if not, then some of you could still be learning it with people in your life that are selfish or that take from you or that betray you. Um, but with a temptation may lead you astray, you're kind of going off on your own because, and that's what I see here with the Eight of Cups, you're kind of going off on your own. Like you want to discover something else, but I'm not sure exactly what's stopping you. I think it's just all of what you've built maybe you're scared to leave it behind or you have doubt you have fear like the card says here um and like we even have sacred journey life cycles family and transformation so i feel like you've already completed one cycle you've already completed something in your life and but now it's like i want more i want to do something more you want to help other people with the healer and the mentor here but you have this status of like the queen of like well, and I don't say that in like a I'm better than you kind of way. It's more of a way of like I've achieved what I've wanted. I've made my way to the top, but now like I want to do something else like and I have the wisdom for it, right? So we also have destiny. All that I shall need to know as I walk shall now be shown. Wow. Also have prosperity. As this tree grows so strong, so fine, so I may prosper from universal divine. Also have a time for healing, balsamic moon. It's time to take action, new moon in Aries. Okay. So patience, and then it's time to take action. That's interesting. I'm kind of getting with patience. It's like, I've had patience, you know, like that's what I'm kind of hearing someone saying, like I've had patience, I've done it all, like I've, I I had, I didn't, it's not like I just got all of that overnight, like I had to work towards it, you know, I was on the bottom of the wheel sometimes, I was on the top, we have like the little um, time things on the wheel card, can't think of what they're called right now, but like it took time to build what you wanted, it took time, but now you're ready to like journey off for something else and it may require you leaving everything that you've built behind for something better and i feel like you're kind of like in this phase of like really understanding what you want now with patience here and discernment and the siren i feel like some of you guys <clears throat> may think it's something but it, it and it may be in that same kind of like theme but it may be a little bit something different than what you 100% have in mind so that could be it as well but I do feel like with destiny here 
all, sh all that I shall need to know as I walk shall now be shown. I feel like with you, if you take action, if you take that first step, things are going to start being shown to you. And it's going to start becoming more clear to you, like what it is that you need to do and why. And, you know, what it is that you want to do and why you're doing this. Like, it really is about, you know, just taking the first step, you know, and you'll figure it out is kind of what I see here, but I do feel like, you know, like the wheel is on your side and it's okay. Like it's okay to basically, you know, quit sometimes, you know, like there's that stupid saying, like, you know, whatever, like about quitters and it's okay. If we never quit, we'd just be doing the same thing over and over again, looking freaking crazy AF and being miserable like sometimes it's okay to quit it's okay to want something more for ourselves so don't let yourself feel bad about that so that is what i'm getting for you guys pile number four hopefully this resonated definitely let me know down below and we are going to move on to pile number five what is going on pile number five this is for those of you that picked this pile with this beautiful crystal on it that i have no idea what the name is but Anyways, let's go ahead and see which goddess is speaking to you guys. So we have Green Terra Salvation. So <clears throat> I actually just started learning about Green Terra because she came to me in a meditation. And I had no idea who she was. I'd never seen her before that I know of. And I ended up doing some research so I could figure out who she was and this was somewhat what she looked like but you can find other pictures of her online that are a little bit more probably accurate because the artist of this deck I think kind of went with their own interpretation of each goddess but basically Green Terra is here to help us she's here to help us grow she's here to help us get through tough situations in our earthly realm in our earthly life and she is here to help us heal and grow and just really give us a second chance. She's here to guide us through the tough times of life from what I've known about her so far and kind of what I've personally felt from her. So let's go ahead and see what other messages you guys have from Green Terra. So we have the animal. We have Gnosis. And we have arrows. Interesting, 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 interesting. So right off the bat, I'm actually getting a lot of sexual energy here. I'm actually getting a lot of desire, a lot of sexual energy, a lot of um, really tapping into your instincts, okay? Really tapping into maybe your sacral chakra. But with Green Terra, I'm also kind of getting like the heart chakra and yeah, so I'm, I'm really kind of picking up on those two energies. And with Gnosis or Gnosis, this is really about really feeling inside yourself for the mystical truth, for the mystical answers. It's, it's really about seeking the truth, but in hidden places, okay? And so with the animal here, with Gnosis here, with Eros here, I feel like the truth is somewhat inside of you, okay? Like, the truth is in your instincts. What are your instincts telling you? Let's go ahead and see what else you guys have. So let's go ahead and move on to your tarot cards here. So we have the Eight of Pentacles, we have the Chariot, and we have the Page of Wands interesting so this is really about a strong determination like a strong determination to express yourself in a very forward direct way okay like this is really about expressing yourself in a really forward direct way <clears throat> and i also feel like it's about growth it's about expansion it's about travel even for some of you getting in touch with the earth, getting in touch with the, the side of you that wants something very badly, okay? But you may not 
be so much in touch with it. There's something that's like wanted here very, very badly. And with Green Terra, I feel like you're looking for growth. You're looking for growth. Um, you're looking for something that's going to kind of take you out of your comfort zone. We also have the Green Man. The forces of nature are with you. So very earthy energy. I'm almost getting what this is kind of reminding me of is it's weird because we had Gaia already and I would think like some of this stuff would come up with for Gaia but it's coming up for Green Terra and what I'm kind of getting here so if you've seen Sabrina on Netflix what I'm kind of getting here is like the elders because we have the green man we have the animal like just it, it's almost like what I'm getting here is like Someone that, like, if you picked this pile, you're possibly from, like, a very, very, very old, um, traditional, mystical way. Like, I'm not really sure how to explain it or, like, what culture it would be or I just, like, I don't have the words for it, but there's definitely a huge mysticism here. That part of me feels like you don't have with Green Terra Salvation here. It's like part of me feels like part of me feels like you're not either grounded enough or you're very grounded and you already know this. Okay, so because it could kind of go the opposite way. So let's see what else we have. So I can kind of get the full picture. So we have nourishment, we have creation. If you're not already working with like earth plants things of that nature, getting out and just working with earth energy, like raw earth energy, you definitely need to, I would say. Okay, so we also have peace, dissolving unwanted and disturbing thoughts. We also have Ganesha, okay. Clearing away obstacles, protection and guidance. And that's kind of what we have here with the chariot. It's like clearing away obstacles. Like, you're protected. The forces of nature are with you. Like, this is kind of a sense to, like, go forward with something. Like, go forward with something. Just do it. Because it's going to bring you peace. Okay, so there may be some kind of, like, thoughts here that you have that maybe you're a bad person or you're different or something along those lines. Um... And that's not really it at all. Like you're just, you need to find your tribe. I feel like you need to find where you're from, like what you're from, because your roots are ancient. Your roots, I really feel, go into like something very ancient, very mystical and very powerful. It's not just like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's something very, very mystical and I can't figure out what it is. And it may be like a, a Sabrina on Netflix type of thing, like the elders or something along those lines. Um, but there's something very mystical about this. And you're very, very creative. We have creation here. Like original is kind of what I'm getting here. Like very, very original, very, very creative. But others may look at you like you run people over in some way. Like with the animal and the chariot, I'm kind of getting this energy of like, people may not understand you. And so it's really important to understand yourself. Okay, editing me here. I wanted to add in because while I was editing this, I started getting more. While I was actually doing this reading, it was kind of hard for me to really pinpoint like something very detailed and it was really bothering me but for whatever reason i just got some more so basically what i'm seeing here is that there may be a lot of things that you start but don't finish and that's what i'm kind of seeing with nourishment with the chariot with the page of wands and with the eight of pinnacles there may be something that you've started on or that you've worked on really hard but you're thinking about giving up for some reason or you're thinking about leaving it behind and with green terra salvation i kind of feel like this is saying it's worth saving like it's worth don't just leave it don't just run it over don't just like 
basically neglect it like keep going is kind of the message that I'm getting here now um, like it's important to nourish it it's important to keep working on it it's it's it can be salvaged whatever it is if that makes sense so hopefully that resonates with you guys and maybe you guys get some of an idea of what these cards mean for you but let's get back with the reading we also have best possible decision Artemis goddess of the bow help me see what must be known okay we also have wisdom on a wednesday while well, with a waxing moon let wisdom come and be renewed we also have the waxing crescent here for nourishment so this is like you definitely have some higher wisdom some of you guys may want to tap into green Terra or the green man like and tap into those energies and, and just see what happens because this is a very interesting pile. It's it's kind of almost like hidden. I can't pull a lot out of it like I could the other piles. It's almost like I'm not supposed to or something. But there's definitely like a deep, deep wisdom in this pile. And there's definitely, I mean, there may be some obstacles. There may be like you're trying to do something you're trying to perfect something with the eight of pentacles there but maybe you think too much about it or you you know you're too perfectionistic about it something along those lines or you're just there's something here that you're kind of not um tapping into all the way so we have the energy is gaining momentum waxing moon another waxing moon wow we also have bringing love into the situation. So, and that's a new moon in Aquarius, by the way. So like I was saying, you're definitely different. You're definitely from some kind of like other realm that I don't even know what to call it or how to really explain it. But there's definitely a lot of energy here of like determination, moving forward, forgiving the past, like, you know, searching for truth, um, following your instincts, like letting your instincts guide you, exploring, exploration, like just doing it, you know, like really just doing it. And then with arrows there, that is like really about our sexuality and stuff. But also remembering to like nourish yourself, nourish your soul, nourish your sense of creation. Like you're protected. You're super, super protected. So, I mean, that's like the main thing that I'm getting here. So anyways, that is what I'm getting for you guys. Pile number five. Definitely let me know down below if any of that resonated. And we are going to move on to pile number six. Well, what is going on pile number six? This is for those of you that picked this beautiful blue crystal i think it starts with a c but i can't remember it right now but it resonates with the um throat chakra okay so anyways let's go ahead and see which goddess has a message for you guys okay so we have the goddess of cali liberation notice all of that blue behind her so i am actually very familiar with cali she's probably been coming to me the most lately um, Kali is about embracing your authenticity, embracing your inner wild side. Um, she is really, she can also be correlated with the Kundalini, okay, Kundalini Yoga and just the Kundalini in general, Kundalini Awakenings. It's basically like this spot that you have, this energy point on your lower back, kind of near your tailbone, um, that can get awakened and cause a huge transformation and series of events within a spiritual awakening but basically just like it says she is liberation she is being your authentic self she is just really embracing the truth embracing the truth about who you are and yourself and she's wild she can be destructive but also transformational so Callie is a good goddess to kind of call upon or that may come to you whatever the case may be um, but she's a good goddess to kind of work with when you are 
needing to kind of break down barriers in your life when you need liberation, when you're feeling stuck or when you're not being true to who you really are or true to your authentic self. So let's go ahead and see what Callie has for you guys. So we have the flame, we have the shadow, and we have the maiden. It doesn't really matter what age you are. With the maiden here, I'm kind of getting this female energy that's very like young or that wants to be young. Um, this kind of like the inner wild child, like I was saying before, really wants to express themselves, especially with like the flame here as well. It's like really wanting to ignite, really wanting to just initiate and just completely shine a light on who you truly are. But with the shadow here, it's almost like you're keeping it to yourself. It's almost like you're keeping it within, but we'll see what else comes up here. So, God, my voice is so like raspy today. Okay, so let's see. We have the Page of Swords, the Eight of Wands, the Ace of Wands, the Three of Pentacles. We have the Knight of Swords and we have the Page of Cups. Interesting. What I'm seeing here is like focusing on your desires. Like this is super, super focused energy with the Page of Swords and the Eight of Wands. Super, super focused energy. I mean like possibly even manifestation or really trying to bring something in. Um, this is also possibly communication, like really fast, impulsive communication as well with the Ace of Wands here, news even. With the Three of Pinnacles, this tells me I'm kind of getting this has something to do with either other people, a group you belong to, a friend circle you belong to, or even like a job, okay? And if you look at her, she almost doesn't look very happy, so I kind of feel like you almost feel like you're not progressing in something with that ladder there. It's almost like there's no progression. Um, this is like really tapping into your inner wild child. I know I've already said that, but like, damn, you know, this is really, really tapping into that energy. And with the Knight of Swords there, this is speaking your truth, speaking the truth about how you really feel, not just thinking about acting, but actually acting, saying what you really feel, truly expressing yourself, truly expressing the authentic you, truly moving forward and being liberated. We also have the gate, the bar a barrier keeps you from your goal. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. It's almost like there's a barrier and that Knight of Swords could kind of be it with that Three of Pentacles. So this could be someone in your life or kind of like a stagnant energy. There's like an energy of feeling like I'm not allowed or am I? This is really moving forward with something, really giving some kind of news to start some kind of new beginning, really expressing your truth, your true emotional truth, getting vulnerable, letting yourself just truly, truly like express yourself from the bottom of your soul. Like if you look at this Knight of Swords, it's like no longer being stuck in this kind of like armor. You know what I mean? It's almost like a defense, like there may be something where you need to defend yourself, where you need to speak your truth. But let's see what else we have here. Yeah, we have Wax and Gibbous Boundaries, okay. We have Full Moon Power. We have Goddess of Creation, Transformation, Creativity, and Wholeness, okay. We also have Healing, Reconnecting with Your True Nature. Yeah, this is definitely messages from Callie. Eternal Dance, Movement, Wheel of Life, Path of Least Resistance. So. Okay, I kind of feel like you're resisting something here with that being said. Like, there's almost like a resistance here with that Knight of Swords there. And I'm kind of like not looking at these cards in order because I'm not sure exactly which order they were drawn in. But there's almost like a resistance. 
like a resistance to how you really feel versus how you think you should feel not trusting in your spirit to move you forward um, and that's what you know these cards are about healing reconnecting with your true nature goddess of creation eternal dance some of you may actually need to dance like physically dance to kind of like tap into that wild child energy again in some way but this is really about reconnecting with who you truly are reconnecting with your heart because i feel like you've had this defense around your heart you don't want other people to see what's inside because you almost feel like you have to act like a certain way but there's something that you really really like want to do here but you feel like well i'm not supposed to act that way or people like me aren't supposed to act like that way in some reason for some reason so we also have justice by the power of three by three may I deliver justice to me we also have divine guidance whispers from the beings who shine let their message be clear and kind okay so i think this might may have something to do with keeping your integrity but this may also have something to do with defending yourself it's like you want something so bad with the gate there like a barrier keeps you from your goal first you have to almost like show the universe or god whatever you believe in that you have this ability like that you have the flame within you like the flame has been lit but it's like do you have what it takes to overcome this battle do you have what it takes to defend yourself to be true to who you really are to really like own your power okay we have the full moon power down here and then we also have boundaries like do you have what it takes to tell people no do you have what it takes to fully embrace your true nature because that's what's going to lead you to healing that's what's going to like remove this block from your life for you guys pile number six so we also have expect a powerful change new moon eclipse and then we also have don't let your past hold you back very interesting which is the south node and you know that could be it too this could be something from the past you're like well i've done this before or this is how it worked out before and it's kind of like keeping you from being true to yourself there's like a strong will here with the ace of wands and the eight of wands there's like a strong passion here but with that three of pentacles that knight of swords it's almost kind of like something stands in your way and it may not actually be another person it may be yourself there may be this part of you that with the shadow there that hasn't really fully grasped something from the past or that hasn't fully forgiven you know and so you're like letting other people overstep you or you're not owning your power in some way you're not letting yourself do what you would really like to do or what you would really want to do because of this energy of like still living in your past or thinking it's only going to be or go one way um something along those lines so it's really important pile number six to really express yourself to really go for it is kind of what i see here like yeah you may hit a block but it will help you get in touch with healing with the page of cups there it will help you get in touch with your power it will help you be true to who you are it will help teach you integrity so that is what i'm getting for pile number six hopefully that resonated definitely let me know down below and we're going to move on to pile number seven what's up pile number seven this is for those of you that picked the seventh pile with this beautiful crystal on it i believe it's amethyst it is for the crown chakra that's what the symbol is for so let's go ahead and see what's going on with you guys and which goddess has a message for you Okay, so we have Shakti, transformation. So Shakti is basically, from what I understand, the form of all of the goddesses combined. 
okay so she can represent the divine feminine she can represent Dan she can represent the mother she can represent the goddess in general she is a Hindu goddess that is kind of like all of the goddesses combined into one okay and she represents huge changes within our life that really help us come into our goddess energy that really help us come into our feminine energy and our power as females or even if you're a male or whatever you identify it as we all have feminine and masculine energy within us so it's really about coming into contact with your feminine energy and also becoming wise becoming experienced and really understanding what your feminine energy is trying to tell you and going through major changes and major upgrades so let's go ahead and see what messages shakti has for you pile number seven okay so we have the box we have the fault line we have the warrior <laughs> Okay, what I see here so far, this kind of animalistic energy within you, you're very, very in touch with, you know, this almost, I want to say rebel within you, this kind of like breaking boundaries, like, you know, doing what you have to do. But here is the thing with the box and the fault line. I feel like either you or someone around you. So either someone is doing this to you or you're doing this to someone else there's they're almost like placing you inside of a box okay like um or you're letting other people do this like you're letting other people keep you stuck and you're letting other people find faults in what you do and find the cracks find the the spaces and what you do find the issues with what you do and they're boxing you in with their own ideas with their own beliefs or you're doing this to other people or yourself okay so let's go ahead and see what your tarot cards are really quick and then we'll come back to that. So we have the Six of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Swords. We have the Ace of Cups. And we have the Six of Swords. Okay. Wow. So what I see here, this is definitely different. <laughs> someone's very giving either it's you or someone around you but someone's like very very giving and shakti is kind of like the feminine female version of the warrior but someone's so so giving and that's what i'm seeing here with the six of pinnacles and the ace of cups someone is so giving whether it's you or another person and it never works out like with the seven of swords here it's like and then we end with the six of swords so it's almost like Things are off balance, like maybe you keep going to the same kind of situations or relationships or whatever or around the same people, but you just, they just keep taking from you, like it's not balanced at all, okay? Like people just keep taking from you, like it could even be physical things like money, okay? But it's like, or it could just even be your energy. It's like someone just keeps taking from you, there's something that is not fair and it, even if it seems fair it's not because there's someone doing something sneaky there's something going on behind the scenes okay and this could also mean you trying to fit into everybody else's box you trying to stay balanced and keep people happy with the six of pinnacles there and really behind the scenes you're miserable right the truth is is that you're trying on all these different people's ideas and masks and you know basically collecting all of their thoughts and what they think you should be and trying to be all of their beliefs in one because there's a fault line with the belief there's a fault line with the thought there's a fault line with the box that either you're sitting in or that you're putting someone else in or that you're putting yourself into of what you can and can't be and what you can and can't do and how you can and can't act and what you can and can't look like all of that and with the ace of cups here this is saying to let it go this is saying in order to emotionally heal you have to let that shit go and you have to move away from the past literally you have to move to cleaner waters like calmer waters you have to sail to calmer waters and get away with from sorry get away from the whole giving and taking thing give to yourself 
and you can call on Shakti to help you embrace your warrior energy. So, anyways, the next card we have is the Queen, Love and Prosperity. So I really feel like you need to embrace this queen warrior-esque type of energy like i said shakti and like is a hindu goddess and she is the kind of like depiction of all goddesses like she is kind of like the goddess of all goddesses so you know it's really important to find that love and prosperity within yourself to really tap into your divine feminine power and not try to be what masculine energy wants you to be and this doesn't mean and when i say masculine energy i'm not talking about a boy when i say feminine energy i'm not talking about a girl this just means to not because masculine energy tries to put things in box boxes right it tries to control feminine energy is chaos it is disorder masculine energy is order it tries to control so it tries to put things inside of the box especially things that seem faulty that it has to kind of like it kind of has to control that it's scared like that scares it and we all have this side within us when we don't understand something we get fearful and we try to control it or we try to make other people around us change to make us more comfortable but if you were comfortable within yourself if you tapped into your own true gifts your own true feelings you could move away from all of that it's like everyone's like I almost see this as like begging. It's like people expect from you and then take from you. And then sit there and pick you apart and find the faults with you. So what I'm kind of getting here so far is that you should really embrace your faults instead of like looking at them as faults or instead of looking at them like something's wrong with you embrace them as your strengths because our greatest weaknesses are also our greatest strengths it's all about perception it's all about how we view it and how we use it right so we have self-reflection we have the path we also have amethyst wow that was the crystal i put on top of your pile transformation certainty and confidence we have ocean of eternal love healing creativity and fertility okay so there's a lot of healing energy here getting creative tapping into your creative gifts taking action not being afraid to tell people no not being afraid to own your power with self-reflection i really feel like a lot of you guys are the person that i'm talking about like a lot of you guys are the person you're dealing with like you're putting your own self inside of a box you're not letting yourself be free you're not letting yourself rebel and, and be authentic to who you are you're not letting yourself transform you're not doing things with confidence and with the path there I feel like it's like whatever transformation is coming is kind of leading you to where you're meant to go. We also have peace, Bridget, goddess, and your sacred name, all right within me, peace is flame. We also have health, mother earth, sweet mother earth, right, bring to me your health and might. We also have confidence is your key to success, full moon in Leo. And then we also have new moon in Cancer, you and your loved ones are safe. Okay, so like I was saying, there's kind of like two energy streams here. There's definitely like an energy of like a giver. Like I need to give, give, give. I need to take care of everyone. And then you get taken advantage of and then you get aggravated. And then people just still sit there and pick you apart anyway. And you're like, really? And so what I see here is like, you're so worried about making sure things are balanced and everyone's happy. And like, you've gotten so used to playing this role for everybody that you truly believe like without you, they won't be okay. And so with like self-reflection there, it's like you really need to reflect on yourself and see why you're truly so giving why you put yourself into that box of like no return why you think you have all these faults within you like what is it why are you truly truly giving why do you truly truly feel the need that you have to give that you have to be 
their Lord and Savior, basically. Confidence is key. That goes with what I was saying before. And confidence in the Amethyst card, this is really finding the confidence. And with the Queen card, like this is really finding your own personal confidence, your own personal truth, the warrior inside you. And then with health, I kind of feel like this could start affecting your health in some way. If you're not, if you don't start learning boundaries and how to walk away, and if you don't start doing something for yourself, if you don't start getting on your own path, like following the beat to your own drum, if you don't start doing that, I feel like this could start affecting you, whether like mental health wise or physical health wise. Because even with amethyst, like amethyst is about detoxing ourselves, like cleansing ourselves and detaching from like bad habits, bad belief systems or old belief systems. So that is what I'm getting for you guys pile number seven definitely let me know down below if it ended up resonating and we are going to move on to pile number eight what's up pile eight this is for those of you that picked the eighth pile and i believe this is black tourmaline but i could be totally wrong but this is the crystal that's on top of it so let's go ahead and see which goddess has a message for you today okay so we have lilith which this deck has labeled as independence so <laughs> there is a lot of controversy and just mixed opinions about lilith but basically what we kind of know to be true is that she was kind of in the jewish version of the bible in the jewish bible and basically she was supposed to be the first woman that was with Adam before Eve but Lilith would not kind of bow down to him she did not want to be underneath of him she wanted to be on top of him because she was very in tune with her own masculine energy and so she did not want to be controlled and so basically she was kind of like either thrown out or left the garden of eden and went on her own and ever since then she's just been kind of like this big mystery some people like some religions have like labeled her as a demon others a lot of like you know people into witchcraft like think that she is not but basically she's just very misunderstood she's very mysterious and this deck has her labeled as independence which i think is pretty spot on so let's go ahead and see what messages Lilith has for you guys. We have the medallion, we have the dead end, we have the bridge, and we have the vision. Very interesting and it kind of goes with the story I was just telling you about Lilith a little bit. It's kind of like, so the medallion is about kind of like this sacred treasure or this piece of treasure that is sacred to you or to somebody else really it can be a necklace from your grandma or it can be some kind of passed down item in some way it's really about some kind of treasure okay and what is treasure treasure is something kind of hidden and also very valuable but then we have the dead end so it's almost like you were searching for something but reached a dead end and if you notice what's so weird in each of these cards there are hands and in these two cards there's one hand but in these two cards there's two hands so it's almost like there was this search for something but you couldn't get quite there all the way like you really wanted something you really wanted this like prize or this treasure but you kept hitting like blocks or you kept hitting like dead ends and now all of a sudden with the bridge and the vision it's almost like you were trying to do it alone but now maybe you have help or something's came back around or you've gained more wisdom or there's almost like a helping hand okay there's some kind of help there's some kind of guidance here whether you think so or not we have the ten of cups this kind of goes with a little of story as well the nine of swords king of pentacles and the three of swords wow <laughs> wow 
Okay, this is literally like being an outsider to the Garden of Eden. The energy I'm picking up here, even though this isn't really the necessary, necessarily like the myth of Lilith, is like someone wants connection. Someone wants like that happily ever after or that family or whatever. I mean, this could even be from your childhood, but someone just feels really left out. So this could be you, but it's like feeling like really like apparently Lilith like had all these children that she did horrible things to but and we have like this lady out in the cold with her child it's like you wanted that happily ever after you wanted that medallion you wanted that treasure but instead you got pain while well, someone else sat on the throne and you were miserable and the three of swords here you may have even been betrayed well, this is definitely a more intense one. So let's see what's next. So we have imagination clouds your judgment. We have resilience. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. It's it's almost like an energy of like not giving up, like being resilient, but broken at the same time. We also have the void. And that's kind of what Lilith is. She's kind of like this this void of mystery. We also have Night Wind, facing fear, subconscious release, healing. We also have Rising Above, chair, I'm sorry, Clarity, Freedom, Solution. There's something that you wanted really, really bad and it's been like driving you nuts, pile number eight. Like driving you nuts. And eight is the strength card and the tarot. It's almost like dreaming this dream that it's going to end up working out or that you're going to end up getting it or that someone's going to come in and save the day or this person's going to come back or this situation's going to come back and be how it was. It's almost like this is clouding your judgment because what I'm getting here is that really you need to face whatever this is. You need to face the void that you're trying to fill so desperately. Like there's something, like there's a void here that you're literally trying to fill because you have this vision. And the only way you're gonna get through, and it may not be getting through how you think you're gonna get through, it may not be getting to the side that you wanted to get on, it may not be getting to you know, your dream or your, not really your dream, but this thing that you wanted so bad, it may not be necessarily getting to that, but it may be a whole new dream that you never would have even known you wanted if you wouldn't have walked through it. I really do feel like you have help. It's just not the help that you wanted. But walking through it is going to bridge that gap. Walking through the pain and not living in the past, not living in this imaginary state of like the past, basically, you know? And this is all about facing fear, subconscious release, healing rising above it clarity freedom solution once you can do that that's when you finally have your freedom that's when you finally have your independence and she's literally in this deck the card of independence and i feel like you guys have been wanting someone else or this other situation or this relationship or whatever like you wanted it so bad and you were just like cast it out like an outsider and you've had to learn how to like fend for yourself and it's just been tormenting you and you've still had it in your head like well maybe one day maybe one day they'll come back or maybe one day it'll be like it was like no accept it face the fear face the void that's within you that you're trying to fill and move on like it's okay to be resilient but be resilient not in the way of like i'm gonna keep doing this until I finally get what I want. Like, I know if I just keep going, like, I'll get it. Like, no, it's a dead end. It's a dead end for a reason. So we also have success. Success that's true belongs to me. Success with honor and integrity. Yeah, like keeping your integrity, man. Staying in your truth, not letting yourself, like, float away in a different reality because of what you wished would have happened or because you feel like someone else or something outside of you can fill this void. This is finding the power because that power is in your void. We also have magical powers. I weave and clear, I cast and no magic secrets to me now show. 
So if you're able to really face the fear and open your eyes and be realistic with the King of Pentacles there, accept the pain, accept the heartbreak, and face the void and sit in the void, yeah, it's going to suck. It's not going to kill you though, right? It's going to suck. It's going to feel like like you just opened Pandora's box, like you just like legit, like, you know, you have all these emotions running through you and it's super uncomfortable and you're like, ooh, emotions, like... I don't want to feel, so I just want to dream and act like this isn't happening and keep like thinking about what it could have been or what it could still be if I just keep trying or if I just do this thing or if I just do that thing or if I just change this. Like, no, just stop and accept it. Like truly, truly accept it because that imagination is clouding your judgment like tremendously. And once you accept it, you can rise above it. That's when you find clarity, freedom, and a solution. And it's not going to play out the way that you wanted it to. Like, I'm sorry to say that. Like, I don't mean for this to be like a negative reading. I'm just going to be real with you guys. Like, that's what I'm seeing. And that's what I'm feeling. But success and your true magical power, your true, true power comes when you accept it and comes from your success. So we have... A fiery climax approaches full moon in Aries. We also have c conclusions are within reach. Ooh, okay, so you guys may be getting very close to this already. Also, if you're not resonating with this, please do not turn it and like make it into something that you resonate with. Like basically, like if you're in a relationship and you're fine, don't be like, oh my god, like I didn't realize, like, you know, I hate my relationship. I, I like you're saying I need to leave my relationship like no that's not what I'm saying I'm saying like basically if everything's fine don't make it fit if it doesn't right like this is for somebody that's really felt like an outsider for a long time in a situation that feels like cast it out cast it aside you could have a baby with someone or a family this could even be your own family like your own blood okay but this is someone that's been cast it aside it feels like someone else like took their place or someone else took the crown and you've had to just like deal with all the heartbreak and all the betrayal and just all the the shitty feelings you know what i mean but it is coming to a conclusion soon with these um full moon cards which is really really good so if you can just truly face the fear you know, truly release this idea, this dream, this imaginary, imaginary, like, you know, desire that you have in your subconscious, that is when you can truly start healing. That is when you can truly start feeling free and also facing that void. Well, what's up guys? Editing me here really quick. So I wanted to add, because while I was editing this, I kind of got like another random message that I wanted to add in here really quick. So also what I think that this could be as saying as well, this reading, is that you need to accept help from other people if there is help from other people and not just like expect there to be help from this one situation or this one person because there is definitely a sense of huge illusion here and you know I feel like the vision and you know that card that we have about your imagination like that definitely is a problem like you're definitely stuck in some kind of illusion of how you wish it would happen or how you hope it will happen and it's time to move on from that but there could be a helping hand with the bridge there I feel like in a way that you're not expecting or in a way that you don't want to acknowledge or recommend because you've been outcasted or felt alone and different and misunderstood for so long you just want to believe that it's only going to happen in the way that you think it should happen or that you want it to happen and so kind of try maybe not to fall victim to that way of thinking either if you can but i just wanted to add that in there hopefully that makes sense and yeah so that is what i'm getting for you guys pile number eight definitely let me know down below if it resonated this was kind of a really super specific one so i'm really excited to hear what you guys thought about this one and we're going to move on to pile number nine what is going on pile number nine so let's go ahead and see which goddess is giving you a powerful message today this is for those of you that picked this crystal or pile number nine so let's see what's up with you guys. 
Okay, sorry, I have the pile reversed. <laughs> we have Freya, Radical Acceptance. Beautiful. Okay, so what I know about Freya, I actually did a little bit of research on her last year at some point because she is an asteroid actually can find her or at least like a point somewhere in the sky but pretty sure she's an asteroid somewhere and she's at like a pretty significant point in my birth chart so i really looked into her to figure out what she represented and basically radical acceptance is actually a very good um kind of term for her because from what i remember she is somebody that was actually very talented in supernatural and psychic gifts okay she had the talent for really knowing and being able to speak the truth okay and she was very very talented and like just knowing things and saying things and being correct about things but somehow some way she i think got cursed or something and like by the way i'm really sorry if this is wrong but this is what i also feel from her as well so I'm sorry, my mythology is not the best, but basically what I kind of feel is that somehow something happened to her. I think she was placed under a curse to where she could tell the truth, she could use her gifts, but no one would believe her, okay? So it, it's kind of like that's where radical acceptance comes in. It's like you use your gifts, you use your talents, you say the truth, you say what you need to say, but it's almost like no one believes you. Everyone thinks you're a joke or everyone just doesn't give you the time of day or pay attention to you like and so there could be a situation that you're going through in your life where it's been really really hard to either bite your tongue i'm getting for some reason or what i was really going to say was that it's been really there's been something that's been really really hard for you to swallow for you to accept in some way because it's really went against you know who you are as a person or it's really went against what you really want or what you really think or your own individual self your own identity and who you are and your own gifts so let's go ahead and see what messages freya has for you guys okay so we have the tear we have the empty room we have the chrome and we have caros okay this is hilarious because only because okay i'm not laughing at you guys but this is these cards are hilarious because they literally go with that story I just told of Freya. <laughs> and that's literally what's been happening with like most of these readings. So we have the tear. So it's kind of about tears, emotional release, but we also have empty room. And so it's almost like a feeling of being empty or there's nothing left to cry or there's nothing left to release or feeling alone, like feeling just alone is kind of what I'm getting here. Feeling alone, feeling like just empty, okay? And you're just kind of looking around like alone in the world or feeling alone in the world, feeling different. Then with the crone and Karos, so with the crone, this is like the mother, the maiden, the crone, or the maiden, the mother, the crone. So the crone is someone with wisdom, the crone is someone with age and experience, but that is also super clairvoyant, super psychic, possibly a witch. You know, this is someone that has lived and learned throughout their life. And with Karos, this is about time. So both of these are about experience, both of these are about time. And it's funny because there's eyes in this card and the tear card. And I really kind of feel like the issue in your particular life, those of you that picked this pile, is how you're seeing a situation. You're kind of seeing it as like not having the time or having to rush something or something needs to happen now or something along those lines. But Kairos is also about being in alignment with yourself and your own internal wisdom. And so I kind of feel you've been put in a situation, pile number nine, where you feel empty and you feel alone in order to accept yourself for who you truly are because it's been too long that you've went against who you truly are. It's been too long that you've looked for acceptance from other people. Every time you look for acceptance from other people, you get an empty room. So let's go ahead and see what your tarot cards are. So we have the Seven of Cups, the King of Swords, Perspective, 
the two of wands and the three of wands interesting definitely all about perspective with the king of swords and perspective there like i was kind of seeing how you're seeing things is not 100 clear in a situation because we have the seven of cups which can hint to illusion so things aren't 100 percent clear right now but they will be in time is kind of what i'm getting here they will be in time and once they are, you will be able to know which path to take. You will be able to see clearly. And you are getting kind of like put in this situation to have radical acceptance of yourself, I feel. Like I was kind of saying before, to know who you are, to see your own truth, and to see the truth about things. Because the perspective card is basically like the hanged man card, okay? It's just they named it perspective instead of the hanged man. So it's seeing another side of something. I also feel like you guys are very tapped in to more than one realm, more than one reality, more than one world, okay? And that is another reason why you feel so alone is because you are different, because you do have some kind of higher wisdom. And in time, once you can learn to accept yourself, I do feel like some of you, especially if you're young, will eventually find somebody that is older and has more wisdom that will be able to guide you, that has been through and experienced a lot of the same things that you have, okay? But I feel like you're about to embark on a serious journey with the Two of Wands and the Three of Wands here, like a serious, serious journey where you're probably going to end up traveling alone. You're probably going to end up leaving something behind. Um, and that's why you're kind of being put in this empty room to accept yourself. But the empty room is also about seeing the potential instead of it just being empty. Because a lot of people look at will look at that room and see an empty black blank room and they will see the lack instead of seeing of what it could become, what it could be. And so I feel like you need to take that same kind of um, way of thinking and turn it towards yourself okay and really turn it inwards like what are you looking in yourself at as lack like what are you looking as lack within yourself instead of the potential because that same place that's lacking actually is a huge strength of yours is a huge gift of yours as well those things that make you different those things that you don't want to accept about yourself are also amazing but i do feel like a lot of a level of what i was saying about freya resonates with you guys because we have the seven of Sub blah, the seven of cups and the king of swords so this is like people just don't believe you or they just automatically think that you're cuckoo or you just you're out there or you don't have like like what you're saying just doesn't make sense or they're confused by you something along those lines and it's really kept you stuck for a while but your whole percep your whole perspective is about to shift i feel but you may have to do some of the work behind it not just like wait for it to happen on its own like you probably will have to do a little bit of the work to look at it in a different way with some of the options that i've already kind of named off possibly so your next card is liberation breaking free from a negative attachment we also have hidden path the marriage of spirit and matter wow okay 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 this is insane insane this really just goes with everything that i've been saying and i just can't believe it <laughs> um okay so we also have self-love beautiful we also have acceptance. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Okay, so with liberation in the hidden path, it's kind of like there's another pile, I forget which one, and they had like something to do, oh, there was a card called the hidden gift. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. It's like, you only see, like you only see a certain amount of options, but there's so much more than what you can see. Like there's another path that you can't quite see right, that you can't quite see right now, that you can't quite see yet, and it will become clear with time. It's just your perspective. Like it's the way that you're looking at it. And they have an eye in that card as well. And so, and a sun. So it will become clear. Okay, like it will become clear. And 
in time, like literally, and I don't really feel like it's going to be a long time or anything when I keep saying that. I feel like it's going to be soon, but the time thing is kind of like your experience. Like it's had to happen the way it's happened and you will see why very soon. But breaking free from a negative attachment, liberation, like definitely being liberated from like an old way of looking at things or an old way of thinking about things or even a person that just constantly puts you down or doesn't listen to you or you know confuse it like is confused by you or whatever you know what I mean like is kind of what I'm getting from that self-love obviously like and I feel like that's kind of why you're being sat still why you're kind of being forced to like have this radical acceptance like this ash freaking overload of acceptance is because you're learning to love who you are even all the empty spots and you're learning to accept who you are for exactly the way you are before you can go out into the world and go on this amazing journey that you're going to go on. So we also have the hourglass time is of essence. This is insane. We cannot, you guys. Oh my God, these freaking readings. Okay, so we also have the wizard. Use your skills to aid others. Okay. We also have a new start is coming, new moon. Cool, cool. And then we have have faith in your dreams. Okay, so I, I do feel like you're being pulled aside to really focus on you, to really pay attention to your dreams. Like you're definitely powerful. You definitely have gifts. You definitely have skills. Um, you definitely have talents, but you may not see it like that. And in time you will. Okay, like there's definitely a huge time element. Time is of the essence. Give yourself space. Give yourself time. Okay, because time is only an illusion anyway. We also have beauty. I have a form which is divine. I allow what is within to shine. Perfect. And then we have passion. Rise, passion, rise up high, and flame my purpose, reach the sky. Also perfect. So yeah, and then have faith in your dreams and a new start is coming. It's self-explanatory. I feel like we really already went over that in the other cards. So, I mean, there's just so many new things coming. Just hang in there. Like, just hang in there. Allow yourself with the tear there. Allow yourself to kind of have the emotional release. Like, allow yourself to sit with yourself, cry, hold yourself. Hold yourself. Don't expect anybody else to hold you and wipe your tears. Do it for yourself because that is a bond that is just so truly beautiful to have with yourself. And once you have that, I mean, there's just nothing like it. There really is, isn't it? Like, I, I, I've had to go through that quite a few times in my life. I've had the hard lesson of learning that, you know, if I can't be there for myself, no one's going to be there for me. And I've had that lesson so many times. I've had to learn that lesson the hard way. And I've literally had only myself, nothing to my name, and I had no choice but to break down, but to be vulnerable, but to allow myself to be how I was, but to accept myself for who I was. Like, I literally had no choice. Everything was taken from me until I did that. And so, but I feel like you're going through something similar where it's all about your perception and your perspective. It's all about really really accepting you for who you truly are and it's really beautiful so let me know down below pile number nine if this resonated with you and good luck to you guys we're going to move on to pile number 10. what is going on my lovely last pile tens and let's go ahead and see what goddess is giving you guys a message so this is the crystal that you guys picked I think it might be like a raw version of citrine. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like. So let's go ahead and see which goddess is giving you guys a powerful message today. Ooh, okay, so we have the goddess of Aphrodite. Alrighty, so the goddess of love, beauty, romance. And this deck has her labeled as romantic love, okay? So there could definitely be something going on in your guys' lives where you are either looking for love or you're in a situation involving love um, where there's definitely some romantic issues or some romantic questions that you have or some romantic guidance that you've been needing in some kind of way. If not, because I have a feeling already this... 
Sorry guys, Mercury retrograde giving me some technical difficulties over here. But basically, if you're not dealing with romantic love shit, then probably pick another pile because I have a feeling that's what this is going to be about with Aphrodite here. So let's go ahead and get into it and see what's going on with Yen's. We have the Eternal Child. We have the Ring. Ooh. We have the Vow. Right off the bat, I told you it was gonna be love related. Okay, so someone wants a commitment here. Someone definitely wants a commitment. Something very strong, something very solid, very stable. Someone that's gonna be around for the long haul. But at the same time with the eternal child, it's almost like you kind of want somebody to, to guide you. Somebody to kind of like take your hand, like the vow, and really guide you. Maybe you've like really dreamt about love since you were a child. You've dreamt about falling in love, getting married, having children, all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and see what else we have. So we have justice. Temperance. Some of you guys could be going through a divorce as well. Justice there. We have the Ten of Wands, the Queen of Swords, and the Queen of Cups. Oh wow, two queens. Interesting. Definitely a lot of romantic, sensuality kind of energy coming up here. So, um, Justice and temperance, like justice is a decision weighing out the consequences, right? Weighing out what you what you desire more, weighing out what you want to do, weighing out your truth, trying to find your truth. Temperance is harmony, is balance, you know? Justice can also be balanced because of the scale. So both are kind of similar in that way. But with the Ten of Wands, there's like a burden. Okay, there's like a burden, so something isn't flowing. And then with the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups, either this could be your energy combined into two queens, or this could be you and someone else. I also feel for maybe some of you, this could be a same sex like situation, or just both of you guys have some kind of feminine, I mean, we all have feminine energy, but that's kind of what I'm getting here with justice and temperance. It's almost like, you want to run free, you want to do what you want, you want to be with who you want, even if it's not necessarily same sex, but there's something here with a commitment because all the back and forth and the Ten of Wands, there's like a burden here that's like stopping you. Let's see what else we have so we can get some more clarity. Okay, so we have the Chalice, Rejuvenation and Fulfillment. We have Resistance. We have Balance. Surprise, surprise. We also have yin yang. I can't, I cannot. Creating harmony through balance. There you go. We also have the message, positive news, positive outcome. We also have jewel within a teardrop, appreciation, appreciation, spiritual and emotional reconnection. Okay, so if, if you pick this pile and you were worried about love, okay? I do feel like there's some kind of appreciation thing here. Either people don't have appreciation for you or you may not have appreciation from someone else. And I was kind of picking up that before, but I wanted to see what else we have because with all the balance energy, it's like something needs to come into harmony. Maybe one of you is carrying too much of the burden, okay? If you're in a relationship or if not, if you're not in a relationship, then something about you needs to come into alignment first because with the queen of swords she's more intellectual she's more idealistic she's um very very discerning she is a little bit more cold a little bit more emotionally closed off the queen of cups is more emotionally flowing right and so there's kind of like these opposites everywhere so but something's going on here with resistance and the ten of wands some of you guys with the eternal child there you're kind of learning how to create balance in your relationship you're kind of learning how to grow up and be responsible how to hold your end of the bargain how to kind of you know keep your own side of the street clean in the relationship how to give and take how to give and receive i guess i should say um 
but it does look like there is a positive outcome here because we have the message and we have all this balance energy so it's almost like it is like some kind of win-win situation um we also have the harlequin true feelings are masked okay so and that could definitely be what these two queens are as well it's like you know or the burden it's like either you can't express your true feelings or you can't get in touch with your true feelings because there's some kind of resistance going on from the past with the ten of wands there some kind of burden it's hard for you to get in touch with that um part of you because it may have been in your childhood or the other person's true feelings are masked masked in some way so that's very interesting we also have healing candle flame burn this hour bring to me your healing power definitely a lot of healing going on in the love life and then we even have love aphrodite i call to thee to bring a true lover here to me or to bring a true love here to me we have work through your fears new moon in scorpio there's definitely some fear i feel of commitment here um, a new romantic cycle begins i don't know why it's not focusing and then we also have oh my god what did i say a win-win outcome is forecast i hadn't even seen that card yet full moon in libra so we have new moon in libra full moon in libra a lot of libra and energy here with temperance, it could be Sag as well, an air sign or a water sign in general. But we also have Scorpio here as well. But there's definitely a lot of um, a lot of energy here to do with love and relationships, like I kind of said. But basically, this is finding the balance, finding the in between, um, learning when to give, when to receive. You know, tapping into the eternal child something needs to be forgiven here so i'm kind of looking at that dove and the vow and i'm like something needs to be forgiven whether it's within yourself or another person now obviously this is not for somebody that's with a toxic freaking ass wipe that's legit out there doing the most and treating you like shit and well whatever this is for somebody that isn't having like severe issues like that they're just having issues like internally connecting emotionally or um healing something there's something that's that needs healed here and i feel like there's a certain appreciation that needs to be had here for either you or maybe the other person that is basically what i'm getting for you guys pile number 10 i don't think there's anything else it's really working through your fears there's like a fear of commitment a fear of like showing your true emotions but that is how you will be rejuvenated that is how your cup will get full again and that is how you will have a cup to even give someone you know what i mean that is how the balance will be restored and she's even got oh my god look at them they both have yin yang on their freaking foreheads and that's two different decks how weird is that how freaking weird wow okay so it, it's definitely getting in touch with your own side your own harmony your own alignment getting in alignment with yourself okay and with it being on the forehead this could have something to do with your third eye opening your third eye um doing some kind of third eye work or seeing beyond what you think you can because justice is blindfolded as well and it says true feelings are masked so instead of using your normal vision this is going to require a deeper sensing a deeper vision that is i feel what is going to be your healing power and really tapping into your emotions and and being a little bit more balanced getting a little bit more discipline i feel also being true um being honest with justice there being honest being true to who you are having integrity um and being yourself okay not being scared to tell the truth about how you really feel okay so what's up pile 10 editing me here so somehow when the video got cut out earlier it definitely um 
cut out at a time where I was like still talking or I had been going over a few things I think because I feel like I said more but it's not in here so basically I think what I was saying that didn't get added in here I know I was talking more about justice because I feel like with justice you're really weighing out the pros and cons of a situation I feel like you're almost with the ten of wands there thinking about if a situation is worth it and sometimes I feel like temperance can sometimes be like forgiveness it can be mediation so I honestly feel that many of you that may have picked this pile could be in a situation in a relationship where you're kind of weighing out the pros and cons. You're kind of weighing out if something's worth it still, if there's still passion there. Um, but I also feel like I'm not getting like a kind of quote unquote negative feeling from this pile. So I'm not getting that this is like a super toxic relationship or that you should just move on. I mean, the only thing that kind of hints towards that is like the 10 of wands, which is like completing a cycle. So yeah, I mean, that's going to be up to you to decide if it's worth it or if you want something more, it's going to be up to you to make that decision and find that truth within yourself. But I feel like with temperance there, it's saying, look at the bigger picture, you know, with the queen of swords there, it's saying, look at the truth and look at your feelings like take all things into account take all things into consideration and don't just look at one thing you know don't just like base it off of one thing because there definitely is a little bit of resistance with that resistance card and with the harley quinn card like true like true feelings are being masked and so it's really for you i feel to tap into this energy of really weighing it out like is it worth it what are the pros and cons what are the consequences like what is my truth what do i truly want do i want to make something work or do i not and for those of you that are single this could be with either an ex or this could be just getting back into dating again to figure out who you really are, weighing out the pros and cons of that. But I really feel like this is more guided towards people in relationships personally. It's really about healing and facing fears from the past. It's really about ending old karmic cycles from the past. There could be past relationships that are affecting your current relationship dynamic that you may need to take a look at in some way. But I really feel like it with all of that balance energy. It's about taking all things into account and creating some kind of fair decision, um, not just a decision based off of something impulsive, basically. This is a really calculated, fair, but also emotional decision. And with temperance there, it's like looking at the bigger picture and it's also mediating and really learning to forgive and really learning to kind of create harmony, more harmony in a situation. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit more because I felt like something got cut out there somehow. So yeah, anyways. That is what I'm getting for you guys, pile number 10. And those were the messages I'm picking up here from Aphrodite. Hopefully those were helpful and made sense. Definitely let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching that this video. That is all for this video. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.